Hey everybody, um, some of you may know me already. My name is Amanda Inman. I've been involved with the Brocco Italiano breed for the last 14 years as an owner and breeder. During that time, I've also been involved with the Brocco Italiano Club of America in various capacities. In addition to being a Brocco enthusiast, I'm also a veterinarian. I graduated from the University of Florida in 2017. As many of you are aware, the Bracco Italiano is faced with some rather significant health issues. One of the more important diseases we see in this breed is hereditary kidney disease. Keeping in mind that the term kidney disease is not a true diagnosis, just like saying cancer, there are many types of cancer, like breast cancer, bone cancer, bladder cancer. Similarly, there are many different types of kidney disease. That's an important concept, which I want to make sure everybody is comfortable with before I get started. In collaboration with the Bracco Italiano Club of America and the Bracco Italiano Health Foundation, I'm working with the University of Florida on research investigating kidney disease in this breed. I'll be making three videos to catch everybody up with what we know so far. I'll start with an overview of the kidneys in this first video, what they are and how they work and why that information is important. Also, I'll cover what we currently know about kidney disease in the Bracco and what testing is currently available. Ultimately, we want to have a DNA test to screen for kidney disease in Bracchi before they're bred. This is our best chance of eradicating the hereditary kidney disease in this breed. The big question we all have is how do we get there? I'll tell you about the ongoing research projects we have a plan for the next five years, and how you can support these efforts and get your dogs involved. That'll be in the, th the third video. I hope through the course of this video, I'll answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, please tag me in a comment on this post or email me at barackopointer at AOL.com and I'll get back to you. So to get started, we all know that the kidneys are two little bean-shaped organs in the belly that make pee, but they do a lot more than that. They also filter toxins and metabolic waste out of the body. As the cells in our body go through their day-to-day -day activities, they create some garbage. And the kidneys help clear that out of the body. They also work to preserve water, electrolytes, and proteins in the blood. The kidneys are responsible for making hormones that regulate red blood cell production and blood pressure. So they're pretty busy little beans because after doing all of that, they make pee. So when the kidney is diseased, none of those functions are done appropriately. The toxins build up in the body, creating a condition called uremia, leading to vomiting, diarrhea, stomach ulcers, and a loss of appetite. The body can't hold on to water, electrolytes, and proteins like it used to, so you get dehydrated. Your electrolytes get out of whack, causing weakness, abnormal heartbeats, disorientation, nausea, and mineralization of tissues. The levels of protein in the blood get slow. Without those proteins, you get fluid retention, abnormal digestion, the immune system is less effective, abnormal blood clots form, and you see muscle loss. With low amounts of those hormones we mentioned a little bit ago, you get low red blood cell counts and high blood pressure. Also with kidney disease, you can't control urine production. Patients with kidney disease urinate a lot until the kidney finally shuts down and they stop making urine altogether. So now that we've covered what the kidney does for the body, I'm going to cover a little bit of how the kidney does this. Essentially, the kidney is arranged in a series of microscopic filters and tubes that combine to do the kidney's work. At the end of this process, urine is collected and sent to the bladder. These tiny filters and tubes are so small that there are thousands of them arranged in each kidney. The first step is the filter portion of the kidney, called the glomerulus. It's a tiny cluster of blood vessels that filter the blood to make sure the important stuff, like protein, stays there, while extra water and toxins in the body get passed into the urine. When this filter is healthy, it makes sure that the really important proteins in the blood stay in the body. When there is disease there, there are holes in that filter, and the proteins that are already so vital to the body's functions pass through and end up being peed out. The next step in the kidney is a series of tiny little tubes, aptly named tubules. Their job is to absorb or flush out extra electrolytes, water, and toxins. 
When the body needs to preserve water, such as during a hike across the desert, they concentrate the urine. Coffee and beer both make you have to pee because they affect these tiny tubes. The tubules' actions change depending on what the body needs. To recap, we have a blood filtering bit called the glomerulus and the tiny tubes that work together. The disease you get depends on what part of the kidney is affected. Some diseases only affect one part of the kidney, others affect everything. When the blood filter, or glomerulus, is affected, you lose those important proteins from the blood into the urine. If the filter is broken, the proteins pass through to, to the tubules. This causes damage, because they're like big angry dudes with sledgehammers, causing all kinds of havoc in a place where they don't belong. Eventually, that causes tubular disease. When the tubules get sick, you aren't able to urine out waste aren't able to urinate out waste and toxins from the body. You get symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, stomach ulcers, and increased thirst and urination. And so now I've given you a bunch of information and you're probably thinking, so what? What does this matter to me and my Brocco? Well, the part of the kidney that's affected changes the symptoms and treatment. It also changes how we identify and test for disease. You've heard me talk enough for one video. So I'll save that bit for next time. My second video will cover what we need to know about the hereditary kidney disease in the Bracco and the current testing options that are available. My last video will cover what current research is being done to investigate kidney disease in the Bracco and how you can get involved. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email or comment on this video. Thank you for your time.